everybody, it's the Van Show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are very excited because today, today, we've got Lee Thomas on the show. Hello, Lee. Say hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Yeah, all right. Now, Lee, uh, we want to know about you, so tell us where you're from. Well, I live in Austin, Texas, but I grew up in the Seattle area, and I've lived all over the country. Whoa. So, uh, so since you've um, traveled quite extensively, what's one of your favorite places you've been? Well, um, I really enjoy New Orleans. Ooh, um, the I, Big Easy. Yes, it's a great city, uh, great artistic history there. Uh, I enjoy New York City, which is where I was living just prior to moving down here to Austin. And as far as Europe, Amsterdam, Barcelona, Ooh. wonderful places, yeah. You're quite the world traveler. Well, you gotta see things. And so we want to learn about how did you become an artist? How did you decide or discover that this was something that you loved? Well, I've read a lot from very early childhood. And when I was about eight years old, um, I would spend my evenings um, writing stories based on the universal horror monsters that I had seen on television. Oh, cool. And then I would illustrate those myself. And I had this incredibly awesome third grade teacher named Mr. Walensky, and he took the images and typed everything up and created these little books that he handed out to all of the kids in my class. And due to copyright issues, they did not go any further than my class. <laughs> but um, it was very exciting um, to see that and to have people commenting on the work. And then, and then from there, you, 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 I'm assuming you were published out of elementary school and then it was just <laughs> like the, the, the dollars were rolling in. Oh, you just can't believe the wealth. Um, <laughs> I actually did not do any more writing after that. I mean, as far as, you know, really focusing on it until I was about 16 years old. And then I wrote an incredibly bad werewolf novel that no one will ever see. Um, the names of the characters kept changing all the way through it. Uh, <laughs> you just kept then, forgetting what they were called. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you're on a typewriter. You didn't have the great computers you have now where you could just scroll back. Everything was <laughs> typed and I didn't know where the names were on the pages. So I just kept barreling ahead. Um, but I, I enjoyed the process. It, it was a great feeling to be creating like that. So I did that. Um, in my mm, mid-twenties, I started publishing nonfiction here and there um, because it, it interested me. Uh, so I did some of that, but you know, I was working a day job after going to school and, and that, and you know, the time does get eaten up. And it wasn't until I had moved to New York and I didn't really know a lot of people there and I was probably in my mid thirties, um, didn't know a lot of folks. And so I, I joined a class at the new school in New York for writing speculative literature, science fiction, fantasy, horror. And at the end of the class, the instructor, who was a pretty well-known science fiction writer, said, you know, you could be making money with this. And oh. I thought, well, that's interesting. That's, that's encouraging. Nice yeah, very much so. Uh, and kind of simultaneously, I had a birthday coming up, so I went to my first horror convention. And I'm, I'm not a terribly outgoing individual. Um, people scare me. Uh, but... My friend is the complete opposite, the friend who went with me. And so she would talk to all of these writers. And these are people I've been reading for years. I mean, they heroes of mine. And she'd be talking to them, and they'd be giving her advice, and I'd be listening over the, her shoulder for it. And so one of the things that happened was when I got back, I packaged up about six short stories and sent them out to the different markets, the different magazines that were publishing those. And three of those got bought, and one of them was picked up by a no-pay wow. um, place. So I thought, hey, this is easy. This is so easy. You know? <laughs> Here I am. I got a check. I got checks, and everything's great. And it was probably over a year before I got the next acceptance on a short <laughs> story, um, even though I was sending them out on a regular basis. But what, what had happened, that early encouragement kept me doing it. And I wrote about two hours a night uh, without fail. And I wrote short stories and worked on novels and whatnot. And then um, a few years later, my first novel was published. And it won the Bram Stoker Award for Whoa. first novel. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And again, that was enough encouragement. Um, obviously, not a lot of financial benefit to doing this. But it's, it's incredibly satisfying. It is, is just a wonderful way to spend your time. Um, especially if people scare you and you don't like 
being out to social situations <laughs> very much. It's much easier to just sit there and chat with your computer. There are many different writing forms, and it's, it's great to try them out because I would write little plays in between novels just to, as sort of dialogue exercises to see does the dialogue itself carry the scene along or does it need something else. I, you know, and I love you're talking about this because I think something, a misconception of young writers or, or you know, people new to writing um, is that everything that I create has to, has to be put out there. No. Like that I, you know, if, if I've made it, if I've spent all this time and energy on it, then I have to put it out there. I, I have to monetize it. I have to, you know, something or another. And that's just not the case. Like, like nobody's going to be great the first time they do anything. No. No, you know, what's really important about that is, and I notice this in young writers when I work with them, um, they have this idea that the book or the story has to be perfect and they won't move forward until it is. And what they don't understand is completing a story is like working a muscle in the gym. You've done that. You've got to complete your stories. You can't get hung up waiting on it being perfect. Yeah. Um, it doesn't work. It slows you down. And quite honestly, you're going to stop enjoying it. And if you do not enjoy the process, you, you just can't move forward with it. Yeah. And so you should be writing anything and everything that you want to write. You should be completing that work. Um, and then you move forward. And just keep in mind, nobody is going to see that story until you're ready for them to see it. The first draft can be awful. I can attest to that. It <laughs> happens a lot in my life. The first draft can be terrible, but then it's done. And you've got this complete picture that you can work with and you can play with it from there. Now, do you have any current works that you'd like to talk to us about? Well, uh, I've got a short story in the Austin Noir Anthology. Uh, which is a very prestigious um, anthology series that covers many different cities. And so you've got um, like Palm Springs Noir, you've got New York Noir, but the New York one is broken up into boroughs. So you've got Queens Noir, Brooklyn Noir, and all of that. And I was very flattered to be invited into it. And it's a little different for me. It's more of a crime thriller than a horror piece. So wow. I liked it. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, no, it's cool. And, so, and it all takes place in Austin? It does. Very much so, yeah. And was that, was that fun, like trying a new genre? Always. It's always fun to try it, and again, I recommend people always try new and different things because in the end, publishing should not be the goal. The goal should be creating something that you're proud of, and it doesn't matter if anybody else ever sees that. Yeah, if, you, if you're having a good time creating it. Yeah, that's it. It's when you lose that joy of sitting there and listening to your characters and writing down what they're doing that's when it becomes a chore. And it's, it's just, you don't want your art to become that. Lee, thanks so much for coming on the show. You sure? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, so I heard you mention earlier, I think you were saying around your 30s when you started getting some short things. Yes. Um, you mentioned working on it two hours a day. Yeah. Okay, so I was just curious about your process because I, I assume, like most people, uh, myself included, some days you just, nothing's happening. So what would you... How would you use that two-hour time? I'm just curious. Well, for me, again, I had just moved to New York. You know, I was there. I did not know a lot of people, so the dinner party invitations were minimal. So every night I would get home from work, uh, probably around 6 o'clock. I would eat something. I would take about a 30-minute nap, and then I would start writing. And I would put down everything I'd been thinking about all day. Um, and then when the time ended, and I had to go to bed, my brain would keep working on the story and it would start filling things in, moving things forward, um, looking for details. And those would occupy me all the next day in between work stuff I had to do. And when I got home, I would eat dinner, take a 30 minute nap and then put all of that stuff in. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Lee. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's been fun. Well, heck yeah. Goodbye. Bye. Bad show, bad show.